Welcome to episode 8, a special feature of six Zen poets from ancient China and Japan, including Han Shan, Li Po, Du Fu, Lamen Pong, Kukai, and Dong Shan. You're listening to the Sacred Poetry Podcast, brought to you by Whole Self Healing Center. Thank you for tuning in. We're celebrating National Poetry Month each day this April, featuring audiobook selections from the 1989 Anthology of Sacred Poetry, edited by Stephen Mitchell, The Enlightened Heart. Throughout the month, you'll be treated to ecstatic poetry from around the world, across various cultures and religions, spanning 25 centuries of spiritual thought. Today is April 8th, 2022. Han Shan was a Chinese hermit poet who lived in the 7th century. He took his name from the mountain where he built his hut. Here are a couple of translations by Gary Snyder. Han Shan, read by Peter Coyote. Clamoring up the cold mountain path, the cold mountain trail goes on and on. The long gorge choked with scree and boulders, the wide creek, the mist blurred grass. The moss is slippery, though there's been no rain. The pine sings, but there's no wind. Who can leap the world's ties and sit with me among the white clouds? My home was at Cold Mountain from the start, rambling among the hills far from trouble. Gone, and a million things leave no trace. Loosed, and it flows through the galaxies, a fountain of light into the very mind not a thing, and yet it appears before me. Now I know the pearl of the Buddha nature, know its use, a boundless, perfect sphere. Next we have a couple translations by Sam Hamill of 8th century Chinese poet Li Po, who legend has it, died while drunkenly leaning over the edge of his boat, trying to embrace the moon's reflection. Li Po, read by Peter Coyote. You ask why I make my home in the mountain forest, and I smile and am silent, and even my soul remains quiet. It lives in the other world, which no one owns. The peach trees blossom, the water flows. The birds have vanished into the sky, and now the last cloud drains away. We sit together, the mountain and me, until only the mountain remains. Eighth century civil servant Du Fu is generally considered to be the greatest of all Chinese poets. He had such confidence in his poetry's healing powers that he prescribed readings to people suffering from malaria. Here's a short piece translated by Kenneth Rexroth. Du Fu, read by Jacob Needleman. Written on the wall at Chang's Hermitage. It is spring in the mountains. I come alone, seeking you. The sound of chopping wood echoes between the silent peaks. The streams are still icy. There is snow on the trail. At sunset, I reach your grove in the stony mountain pass. You want nothing, although at night you can see the aura of gold and silver ore all around you. You have learned to be gentle as the mountain deer you have tamed. The way back, forgotten, hidden away, I become like you, an empty boat floating adrift. 
Layman Pong is a Chinese Zen master who, upon reaching middle age, retired and gave away all of his possessions, including his house, which became a Buddhist temple. Here are a couple translations of his poems by Stephen Mitchell. Layman Pong, read by Peter Coyote. When the mind is at peace, the world too is at peace. Nothing real, nothing absent. Not holding on to reality, not getting stuck in the void. You are neither holy nor wise, just an ordinary fellow who has completed his work. My daily affairs are quite ordinary, but I'm in total harmony with them. I don't hold on to anything, don't reject anything. Nowhere an obstacle or conflict. Who cares about wealth and honor? Even the poorest thing shines. My miraculous power and spiritual activity, drawing water and carrying wood. Kukai, also known by his posthumous name Kobo Daishi, was a 9th century Japanese abbot, calligrapher, scholar, and founder of the Shingon School of Esoteric Tantric Buddhism in Japan. Here is a short sample of his work translated by Jane Hirschfield. Kukai, read by Jacob Needleman. Singing Image of Fire. A hand moves, and the fire's whirling takes different shapes. All things change when we do. The first word, ah, blossoms into all others. Each of them is true. In closing out our special feature of six Zen poets from China and Japan, Dongshan Yangtze, who was the founder of the Soto School of Zen practice. Translation by Stephen Mitchell. Dung Shan, read by Stephen Mitchell. If you look for the truth outside yourself, it gets farther and farther away. Today, walking alone, I meet him everywhere I step. He is the same as me. Yet I am not him. Only if you understand it in this way will you merge with the way things are. You're listening to the Sacred Poetry Podcast, brought to you by Whole Self Healing Center. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs>